Oh, let's get rid of this. Well, first I'd like to say welcome and thank you for taking the time to attend today's presentation. My name is Lance Zurich and I am the product manager for the Fisher Technic division over here at Studica. And today I'm going to provide you with an overview of Fisher Technic's line of pre-assembled industrial simulation and training models. Now, whether you're an educator at the high school level involved in CTE training, a college professor or industrial trainer teaching programming skills required in manufacturing, a company looking for ways to demonstrate their software-based solutions, or maybe you're someone looking for ways to make IoT-related concepts easier to understand to employees or customers. But in any case, I believe this presentation will offer some important options for you to consider. So let's start off by considering the skills gap. Now, if you've attended any of our other Fisher Technic Education webinars, you probably heard me discuss the importance of STEM education. STEM, of course, is an acronym which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, and it should go without saying that STEM education has been perhaps the most discussed topic in education for the last decade. Now, as most of us are aware, the push for developing STEM skills in students is in large part to help to best prepare them to take their place in the modern workforce. Not so long ago, when our parents or even our grandparents were entering the workforce, employers in areas such as manufacturing might have been satisfied with hiring workers who could demonstrate good motor skills and a solid work ethic. But as manufacturing becomes more and more dependent upon automated processes and robotic control, employers now desperately need individuals who have a background in areas such as mechatronics, industrial electricity, mechanical components, and programming PLCs. Now, as it ties in directly with the solutions we're going to be looking at in this presentation, let's just consider that last skill area I just touched upon, that of a PLC programmer. Now, first off, for anyone who may not be familiar, let me explain exactly what a PLC is. The term PLC is an acronym, the letters of which stand for Programmable Logic Controller. So essentially, a Programmable Logic Controller, or a PLC, is a very specialized computer used to control the types of machines and automated processes typically found in an industrial setting such as an automated manufacturing plant. As the world of manufacturing becomes increasingly dependent upon these automated control systems, the need for workers skilled in the programming of such systems grows exponentially. So how much can PLC programmers earn? Well, just to get a clear idea of just how highly prized these programming skills are, here are some salary figures for PLC programmers as quoted from job search website, nuvu.com. Quote, the average PLC programmer salary in the USA is $78,000 per year or $40 per hour. Entry level positions start at $43,924 per year, while most experienced workers make up to $132,600 per year, end quote. Now, as I prepared this webinar, and this was back in February of 2020, I took a look at the list of current job openings for PLC programmers on the NUVU website. Now, the listings at that time showed 15 different positions being advertised with salaries of over $75,000, and two of which even listed salaries of $195,000 per year. Now, because of this trend, savvy students are increasingly enrolling in PLC training programs at the college and university level. Now, at the same time as this workforce of tomorrow gets their training, more and more manufacturing companies facing an urgent need right now are enrolling their incumbent workers into private training schools offering such programs. So how long does it take to learn PLC skills? Well, depending on a student's background and experience, very basic PLC programming skills can be learned in as little as 30 to 40 hours of training. But of course, to become truly proficient in all five of the most widely used PLC programming languages, which I show here on the screen now, as well as learning how to efficiently troubleshoot and address errors and equipment breakdowns, of course, more training would be required. Now, once again, while many students can learn PLC programming skill, skills in a college lab setting, there are many other options available. For example, high school CTE programs, adult continuing ed programs, vocational training, technical training and trade schools, and employer-sponsored incumbent worker training programs. Now this all being said, the question that still arises for the educator 
whether in the university or the vocational schools classroom or high school or what have you, is how do you teach PLC programming in a way that makes it engaging and relevant to the student, whatever their background? How do you get away from the dryness of textbooks and video presentations and instead make it realistic and hands-on? But there are other areas of focus beyond programming that need solutions for demonstrating, exploring, and understanding different aspects of automation and control systems. Now, it could be a company involved in creating or marketing a new type of software-based solution that's looking for ways to make more tangible processes which might otherwise be perceived as abstract or to test it out in a more realistic fashion. Maybe it's a manufacturer looking for a way to better visualize the production process for workers or stakeholders as they prepare to build a new factory. Or perhaps it's a company looking for an engaging way to demonstrate their services or solutions in a public setting, such as a trade show. Now, in each of these cases, and of course there are more, there's a need for finding a solution that is engaging, and which can effectively mimic and simulate real world automated systems. And that brings us to the line of Fisher Technic Industrial Simulation and Training Models. These models have been designed with the intent of providing a compact, engaging and hands-on method for teaching and demonstrating high-end automated systems. The line consists of a series of pre-assembled small-scale models, which are designed to replicate both in appearance and function, various automated and robotic machines and systems commonly used in commercial manufacturing. But before we look at each of these models, let me provide you with just a little bit of background. Fisher Technic has been creating tools for teaching students of all ages how technology works for over 50 years based around their unique building system. Now, what makes this building system so unique is that unlike other popular construction systems where the components are designed to simply stack, with the Fisher Technic system was created with more of an engineering mindset. The core building block is designed to enable attachment from all six sides and because of this, it allows for almost limitless design pots of possibilities. Many of the parts are designed to slide together and lock in place using a tongue and groove assembly method. And the hundreds of different parts available also help to address very specific design needs. The Fisher Technic system was developed back in the 1960s by German inventor Arthur Fisher, who's noted for countless innovations used in the construction and the automotive industries. Mr. Fisher, at the time of his death in 2016, held more patents in his name than Thomas Alva Edison had amassed during his own lifetime. Now, besides Fisher Technic, Mr. Fisher was the inventor of synchronized flash photography back in 1949, as well as the creator of the expanding nylon wall plug, which is used in conjunction with a screw or a bolt to help anchor heavy objects to walls. His company, the Fisher Group, employs thousands of individuals worldwide, producing many variations of fastening devices used in building construction. They also produce numerous components used in automobile assembly, as well as providing consulting services to companies who wish to employ state-of-the-art manufacturing processes. Now, once again, the focus of Fisher Technic sets, whether they're those intended for the retail market or for classroom use, has always been on helping to foster an understanding of technology. Many of the products offered by Fisher Technic for the education sector are subject-specific sets focusing on different STEM related areas, such as, for example, mechanics, pneumatics, robotics, or renewable energy. In many of these sets, students are asked to build a progression of models using the unique Fisher Technic system, and then perform various experiments, which allow them to explore and understand aspects of that specific subject. Now, there are also sets designed to enable schools to offer a complete standards focused curriculum based program where the focus is on project based learning. Now, in these project-based learning programs, students dive deep into engineering and learning all aspects of the design process, which requires them to work in groups and create various devices and automated machines to meet the criteria put forth in a series of real-world scenarios based upon their own trial and error experimentation and research. The line of Fisher Technic simulation solutions, which are, of course, the focus of today's presentation, are something entirely different. The line consists not of kits, but of a series of pre-assembled small-scale models which replicate, again, in appearance and function, various automated robotic machines and systems. 
Models in the Fisher Technic simulation line include things like conveyor belts, punching machines, three axis pick and place robotic arms, color sorting lines, and even high bay warehouse storage systems. Now, besides these individual models, which focus on specific automated processes, Fisher Technic also offers an integrated factory simulation model. This model consists of four individual workstations, a vacuum gripper robot, a high bay storage warehouse, a multi-processing station with an oven, and a sorting line with color detection, which are designed to work together as one self-contained material cycle. Now, before we begin to look at the models in the simulation line in more detail, let me very briefly outline some of the advantages of using Fisher Technic solutions. Now, I do apologize in advance, as the first few points are things I've touched upon earlier in the presentation, but I think in each case, it is worth repeating. First, Fisher Technic simulation solutions allow educators to offer engaging, hands-on tools for teaching, exploring, and understanding various aspects of automation and programming. Now, this could be for understanding how automated systems work, or for having a tangible physical system to observe and work with in a programming or PLC focused learning environment. The models, once again, are designed to realistically replicate in both appearance and function, common automated systems such as conveyor belts, sorting machines, robotic arms, and much more. Because the models are compact and in many cases tabletop size, they are not only ideal for use in the classroom or in office demonstrations, but also for demonstrating software or other technology-based offerings in a trade show environment. The next factor is quality. Each Fisher Technic simulation model is a hand-assembled, high-quality, German-made product. Each of these models is available in a 24-volt version designed specifically for use with industry-standard PLCs. Now, whether you prefer to use Allen Bradley controllers, Siemens controllers, or controllers from manufacturers such as Honeywell, Mitsubishi, General Electric, or many others, you can control these 24 volt versions with the PLC you prefer. Likewise, just as you can use your choice of controller, you can also use your preferred programming language. If you prefer ladder diagram, functional block diagram, structured text instruction list, sequential function charts, either way, it's your choice. Now, please note that with these 24 volt versions, no PLC is included and all programming and programming guidance, as well as any power sources or other hardware are the responsibility of the end user. Of course, this should not be an issue as these models are designed specifically for industrial users or for those individuals teaching or exploring industrial processes involving PLC programming. Now, in addition, for non-industrial users and for those educators who are not versed in or familiar with PLC programming, there are several models which are also available in nine volt variation. These nine volt versions ship pre-wired to Fisher Technic's own proprietary robotic controllers, which are known as the Fisher Technic TXT controller. And each of these controllers is pre-programmed using Fisher Technic's own RoboProGraphic programming software. The only additional component required with these nine volt versions will be the addition of one or more 120 volt power adapters, as I will specify with each model. Otherwise, in most cases, these models should essentially be ready to use out of the box. The next advantage. Now, if you're involved in demonstrating or exploring IoT, which is also known as the Internet of Things, Besides the fact that many end users have adapted many of the models in the primary line of simulation and training solutions for IoT purposes, Fisher Technic now also offers a special IoT focused version of the factory simulation, which is designed specifically for exploring and understanding cloud control and what is sometimes referred to as factory 4.0. In this instance, the model is designed to be both controlled and monitored from a special web-based dashboard and we will, of course, discuss this in more detail just a little bit later in the presentation. Finally, Fisher Technic simulation models are cost effective. Now, if you've had the opportunity to look into any of the other hardware-based industrial simulation options that are available in the marketplace, 
you'll probably notice that the entry point for many of these products can easily be twenty to $30,000 or even much more. Fisher Technic simulation solutions, on the other hand, are available at just a fraction of that price, as well as being compact, realistic, and high quality learning and demonstration tools. So on that note, let's look at each of the models which are available. The first model we're going to look at is the vacuum gripper robot. We'll let this get started a little bit. Now, as you can see, the vacuum gripper is a three axis robotic model with a vacuum gripping device. The model is designed to precisely pick up and position work pieces in three dimensional space. The model includes three encoder motors, three push button limit switches, a vacuum suction device, a compressor, which is the blue brick component that you'll see in the video, and a solenoid valve. The dimensions of this model are approximately 9 by 19 by 15 inches and it has a weight of about 7 pounds. The 24 volt versions of this model, as well as all of the first five 24 volt models that we're going to be looking at this afternoon, each have a relay board for motor polarity reversal and both a multi-pin connector with 34 pins and a grid of 2.54 millimeters as well as additional PCB terminals with push-in connections for all inputs and outputs. Now again, the 24 volt version of this model is with, with all of the 24 volt versions will require you, the end user, to provide the PLC and the programming. Now for a limited time, there is a nine volt version of this model available, which is the version you see in this video. And once again, this will come pre-wired to the Fisher Technic Robotics TXT controller and will ship fully programmed using RoboPro graphic programming software. Now, if you wish to, uh, if you wish to create your own programming, individual licenses of RoboPro are available on our website. I see the video is lagging, so let me try to address that here. Hang on. We'll restart that, and I will continue. Hopefully, that won't be an issue. Now, as I was saying, if you wish to create your own programming, individual licenses of RoboPro are available on our website. Otherwise, for this 9-volt version, only the addition of a single 120-volt power adapter will be required. Now, I will mention that for this and for all the models we're going to look at today, the specs are also detailed in the product listings found on the Studica website, as well as in our product brochure, which I will provide information on obtaining at the end of this presentation. The next model we're looking at will be the automated high bay warehouse. This model features a transfer station with a conveyor belt, along with a shelf stacking mechanism for storing and retrieving workpiece carrier trays and nine individual storage spots. Components of this model include two encoder motors, two mini motors, four push button limit switches, two photo transistors, two LED light barriers, and a selection of different colored work pieces along with carrier trays for each. Now I will mention that this particular model is a favorite among educators I've spoken with who teach programming. And the reason for this is because it gives you a lot to work with in regards to the movements of the picker mechanism, as well as the precision required to properly store and retrieve each of these work pieces as it's entered into the warehouse, each step of which of course will require its own very specific coding. The dimensions for the model are approximately 19 by 28.5 by 15 inches, and it has a weight of approximately 18 pounds. Again, the 24 volt version has a relay board for motor polarity reversal in both a multi-pin connector, again, 34 pins, with a grid of 2.54 millimeters, as well as additional PCB terminals with pushing connections for all inputs and outputs. Again, you will need to provide your own PLC and programming, and is with the other one, a limited edition nine volt version is still available at this time, which again comes pre-wired to a pre-programmed TXT controller and one 120 volt power adapter is required. The next model in the line is the multi-processing station with oven. The model we're going to see features a furnace simulation with a pneumatic sliding door. There is a downstream processing station with a pneumatic transfer unit, 
that includes a vacuum gripper, a cutter with a rotary table, and a conveyor belt. Components used on this model include four mini motors, six push button limit switches, two photo transistors, two LED light barriers, four, four, excuse me, four solenoid valves, and a compressor. The dimensions for the model are approximately 20 by 14 by 12 inches, and it has a weight of about 11 pounds. Again, the standard version of this model is a 24 volt version for use with the PLC of your choice, which once again has a relay board for motor polarity reversal and both a multi-pin connector, 34 pins with a grid of 2.54 millimeters, as well as additional PCB terminals with pushing connections for all inputs and outputs. The limited edition nine volt version in this case is connected to two robotics TXT controllers. So in this instance, two 120 volt power adapters would be required for all operations of the nine volt version. Cool. The next model we will look at is the sorting line with color detection. They always like to turn the sound down for that one. Now this simulation features a system for detecting work pieces of different colors and sorts them via conveyor belt into three different storage bins. Components on this model include two mini motors, five photo transistors, five LED light barriers, three solenoid valves, a compressor, and an optical color sensor. The dimensions for the model are approximately 20 by 14 by 12 inches, and it has a weight of about 10 pounds. Now, as with the models we've looked at before, the standard 24 volt version has a relay board for motor polarity reversal and both a multi-pin connector, again, 34 pins with a grid of 2.54 millimeters, as well as additional PCB terminals with pushing connections for all inputs and outputs. And again, you do need to provide the PLC in the programming. The limited edition nine volt version, again, comes pre-wired to a pre-programmed TXT controller. And in this case, one 120 volt power adapter is required. And we're all done. The next model is the factory simulation, which combines the four models we've just reviewed. Again, the vacuum gripper robot, the automated high bay warehouse, the multi-processing station with the oven, and the sorting line with color detection into one self-contained material cycle. The cycle we're about to see works like this. Work pieces are retrieved from the automated high bay warehouse using the vacuum gripper robot and then moved to the multi-processing station with the oven. After the work piece has been processed by this machine, it is then sorted by color in the sorting line with color detection before again being moved by the vacuum gripper robot to the automated high bay warehouse for storage. Now, as we've already discussed the components of each of these individual models previously, I won't belabor it by restating them here. But what I do want to discuss are the dimensions of this model as a whole. As it again combines four individual models into one cycle, it will have a much larger footprint of approximately 39 by 31 by 16 inches, and it has a collective weight of between 43 and 46 pounds. Now, due to the fact of the dimensions and the fact that this is pre-assembled, please note that this model will only be shipped flat as freight on a pallet. And I also want to point out that as the factory simulation models tend to be in very high demand, please anticipate a possible turnaround time of up to three weeks prior to any order for this model leaving our warehouse, just because once again, they're very high demand. And a few other things to note. First, this is currently available in the standard 24 volt version and in very limited quantities in a nine volt version. Now in this instance, the nine volt version is wired to five robotics TXT controllers. Now, as such, it will require three 120-volt power adapters. 
And as always, the 24 volt version will require the end user to provide all PLCs, all programming, and any other hardware required. Again, each station of the 24 volt version has a relay board for motor polarity reversal and both a multi pin connector, multi pin connector, excuse me, 34 pins with a grid of 2.54 millimeters, as well as additional PCB terminals with pushing connections for all inputs and outputs. Now, before we move on to the next group of models, I do want to mention that there is a storage option available for those users of either of the two factory simulations we just discussed, as well as a couple models we're going to discuss later in the presentation, who may wish to transport the models or who want to protect them, of course, when not in use. Now, the travel case, which you see on the screen, consists of an aluminum case maker profile with plastic plates and steel ball corners, as well as four steel tilt handles and angle protection corners. The upper section of the case is partially lined with soft foam blocks in different heights to help cushion the model. And it also has three internal zipper pockets for storing cables and other accessories. The lower portion is lined with hard foam. It's designed so that once the top of the travel case is removed, the model can remain in the bottom section of the case and remain fully functional. The case has exterior dimensions of approximately 41 by 33 by 17 inches, and it has a weight of approximately 53 pounds. Please note that even when using the travel case, these models should still be shipped flat. Now moving back to the models themselves. The next model is a basic conveyor belt. This is a transport belt with a length of 275 millimeters that is used to transport work pieces with a diameter of up to 29 millimeters. Multiple conveyors can easily be connected to one another to increase the length of transport as desired. Components on this model include an excess motor, a push button limit switch, two photo transistors, and two LED light barriers. Dimensions of this model are approximately 14 by 10 by four inches, and it has a weight of under two pounds. As before, the standard 24 volt variation includes a multi-pin connector. In this case, 26 pins with a 2.54 millimeter grid as shown here. And for a limited time, we still have available the nine volt versions pre-wired to the Robotics TXT controller as shown here. One 120 volt power adapter is required for all operations. The next model is a variation of the conveyor belt in this, time, in this case, including a punching machine. This features essentially the same conveyor as we just looked at, except this time with a machining station built in. Components on this model include two excess motors, two push button limit switches, two photo transistors, and two LED light barriers. The dimensions are approximately 15 by 12 by 7.5 inches, and it has a weight of about three and a half pounds. Again, it's available in the standard 24 volt variation with again, a 26 pin connector, 2.54 millimeter grid is shown here. And for a limited time, we are still offering the nine volt version wired to the robotics TXT controller, which requires one 120 volt power adapter for use. The next model is the indexed line with two machining stations. This model features a U-shaped conveyor line consisting of a milling and a drilling station and four conveyor belt sections. Components on the model include the four conveyor belts, as I just mentioned, eight excess motors, four push button limit switches, five photo transistors, and five LED light barriers. The dimensions of the model are approximately 19 by 18 by 11 inches, and it has a weight of about eight pounds. Again, it's available in both the 24 volt standard version with a 26 pin connector and a 2.54 millimeter grid for use with PLC, and in a limited release nine volt version wired to the pre-programmed robotics TXT controller and requiring one 120 volt power adapter. Next is a variation on the idea of a pick and place robot, the 3D or three axis robot. The three axis robot has gr gripping forceps, which it uses to help it quickly and precisely position the work pieces it picks up in three dimensional space. The degrees of freedom for the robot are as follows. Axis one turns 180 degrees. Axis two can move forward or back 90 millimeters. Axis three can raise or lower 150 millimeters. Components on this model include two excess motors, two encoder motors, and four push button limit switches. Dimensions of this model are approximately 19 
by 16 by 9 inches and it has a weight of about 6 pounds. Again, it comes in either a 24 volt version with the 26 pin connector and 2.54 millimeter grid designed for use with the PLC and the programming of your choice or in a nine volt version, which in this case is not limited availability. It's a standard model. And this comes again, pre-wired to a pre-programmed robotics TXT controller, and it will require one 120 volt power adapter. Now that concludes our look at the first nine variations of simulation models. The next pair of simulation models focus specifically on the area of IoT and are designed for demonstrating and teaching about cloud-based monitoring and control. These models go by the name of Training Factory Industry 4.0, and they are available in both a 24-volt version for use with PLC and 9-volt variations for classroom and demonstration purposes. They have been designed to help address how the recent changes in industrial production driven by digitization have created a need for stronger networking and more relevant information on all production levels. With this Industry 4.0 update of the existing factory simulation model, such digitization activities can be simulated, learned, and applied on a small scale before they are implemented on a large scale. Now, as the following video showcasing the 24-volt version provides a nicely narrated overview of just how the factory works, I'm going to step back for just a moment and allow you to watch and listen to the narrator. Actually, first I'm going to fix this so that the, oh, we're going to catch the uh, narrator up here. Hang on a second. Try this again. Fisher Technique Learning Factory 4.0 illustrates processes for a digitized smart factory from delivering raw material to the finished product. Industry 4.0 applications can be tested and demonstrated using the simulation model that has already been set up. Digitization activities are simulated on a small scale and learned before they are used on a large scale. The training and simulation model demonstrates the process from the delivery, collection, and storing of the materials through the ordering and the manufacturing processes to delivering the finished product. The training factory industry is controlled by a PLC controller, a Raspberry Pi as IoT gateway, and a TXT controller. The PLC program controls the individual modules of the factory. The program is written in structured text. The PLC communicates via the standard OPC UA protocol with the Raspberry Pi, which acts as an IoT gateway to connect the factory to any cloud. The program on the Raspberry Pi is implemented in Node Red. In Node Red, there is an additional local dashboard available, which can be adapted to your own needs. The Raspberry Pi also communicates with the TXT controller via the standard MQTT protocol, which in turn enables access to the Fisher Technique Cloud. The program on the TXT controller is executed in CC++. The sensor image data are used and monitored in the Fisher Technique Cloud. The integrated WLAN router transmits factory process data to the cloud in real time. The data is presented on a web-based dashboard. Three views are available. The customer view, the supplier view, and production view. The views and data can be accessed using internet-enabled devices and can also be used remotely. The USB camera is controlled from the cloud and can view the entire factory. A sensor station measures air pressure, air quality, temperature, humidity, and brightness. The default process cycle begins with storing and identifying the material. Using RFID NFC technology, ensures that the material can be digitally traced. 
The integrated NFC tag stores production data that can be read out via the RFID NFC module. The cloud displays the parts color and the ID number. The vacuum gripper places suction on the material and transports it safely to the high bay warehouse. The production view on the dashboard shows where the product is in the manufacturing process. The first in first out principle applies to outsourcing. The goods that were stored first are also the first to be removed. Ordering material is triggered online on the dashboard. The desired product and the corresponding color are selected in the customer view and then placed in the shopping cart. Customer specific production takes place in lot size one. The production process is simulated in two steps. The suction gripper passes the material on from one step to the next. The material is transferred to the sorting system once production is complete. The sorting system receives the allocation command as soon as the color sorter detects the proper color. The material is sorted using pneumatic cylinders. Production data is written on the material at the end of the production process. The finished product will be provided for collection. Instructional material and the source code for the stored programs are available online. The Fisher Technique Learning Factory 4.0 is ideally suited for education and training in vocational schools and companies, for research and teaching in colleges and universities, for development projects in IT departments, for production planners, and for demonstrating in-house software solutions at trade shows and other corporate events. The customized storage and transport case is a worthwhile add-on. Okay, well, let's touch on some of the points that were mentioned in the video. The following topics can be addressed with the Fisher Technic Training Factory Industry 4.0. Training and simulation on a realistic production model, in-depth learning through haptic comprehension, optical and sensory applications, and digital traceability with NFC slash RFID technology. Customized production in lot size one, integrated cloud connection and control via smart devices, using and operating dashboards, web-based remote maintenance, the linking of production and materials planning data, and the connection of upstream and downstream logistics processes. Now, as you just saw, the model incorporates many features not found in the models that we previously discussed, besides just most notably the use of the cloud-based dashboard for monitoring and controlling the model. Some other examples would be the camera used for visually monitoring the factory functions from the cloud-based dashboard, as well as the environmental sensor, which collects data on variables such as temperature, air quality, humidity, and air pressure. The use of NFC chips in each individual workpiece, each of which has a unique identification number, enables the position of each piece in the work cycle to be mapped. And the use of MQTT, or message queuing telemetry transport, allows the network TXT controllers to communicate with one another. Now, as there are two variations of this model, let's go over what makes them different aside from the voltage requirements. First, we're going to focus on the 24 volt version and what makes it unique. First, it's a bit of a hybrid in that while requiring a PLC for operation and control, it also incorporates one Fisher Technics Robotics TXT controller. The TXT controller again serves as the MQTT broker and interface to the Fisher Technic cloud. Communication between the PLC and the TXT controller is carried out using an IoT gateway via OPC UA. OPC UA, which is also known as OPC Unified Architecture, 
is standard for exchanging data across different platforms. In addition to the TXT controller used here, there is also an IoT gateway using Raspberry Pi with no red. This allows the option for not only presenting and using data on a dashboard in the Fisher Technic Cloud, as we just saw with the 9 volt version, but also to be able to display data and calibrate the stations of the factory in a node red dashboard. The model also incorporates new, newly developed 24 volt adapter board to interface to the PLC. These of course ship as part of the assembled training factory and are connected to the PLC via terminals. Now, among other things, the latest generation of adapter boards allows the speed of the encoder motors to be controlled via PWM AKA pulse width modulation. They also have push pull output stages for photo transistors and for buttons. Finally, one of the most important new features of this model, unlike any of the previous 24 volt models, which we've discussed today, the new 24 volt training factory industry 4.0 also includes access to a sample program. This program again mentioned created in structured test text format was created based upon a Siemens S7 1500 PLC and is available for download on GitHub. Of course, the new training factory can also be controlled with other PLC models and brands once the end user makes some small adjustments to the sample program. The source codes needed are also available for download from GitHub. Now as with the first of the 24 volt models we looked at today, each of the workstations of the 24 volt variation of the training factory industry 4.0 model have a relay board for motor polarity reversal and both a multi-pin connector, 34 pins with a grid of 2.54 millimeters, along with PCB terminals with pushing connections for all inputs and outputs. And again, all this information and much more is included in the 152 page PDF manual, which in this case can be downloaded directly from the Fisher Technic or the Studica website. Now, in the case of the nine volt version, the control is facilitated through the use of six robotics TXT controllers. Now, unlike all the other nine volt versions we've looked at previously today, these are programmed not using RoboPro, but instead using C++. C++. Again, all programming is preloaded so that once the connections to the internet and the cloud-based dashboard are made, all of which are clearly outlined in the downloadable documentation PDF, which is also available on the Studic and Fisher Technic websites. As long as you follow the directions, you should be able to get started quickly. The nine volt version will require the addition of three 120 volt power adapters, the ability to access the internet, of course, as well as a tablet or a device for accessing the cloud-based dashboard. Now, in either case, dimensions for these models are approximately 39 by 31 by 16 inches, and they have a weight of approximately 51 to 53 pounds, depending on which version we're looking at. Now, as with the two factory simulation models, which we discussed earlier, we do recommend the optional travel case we looked at before to help protect your model during transport or storage. And that's the Training Factory Industry 4.0 model, which is again available in both a 9 volt and a 24 volt variation. So of course, you might well be wondering how much these models cost. So let's take a quick review of each option I've discussed along with the pricing. The vacuum gripper robot, the 24 volt version is $974 per unit. The nine volt version is $1,199 per unit. The automated high bay warehouse in the 24 volt version is $1,099 in the nine volt version is $1,319. The multi-processing station with oven in the 24 volt version is $999 each. In the nine volt version, it's $1,479 each. The sorting line with color detection in the 24 volt variation, it is $836. In the nine volt version, it is $1,129. The factory simulation, again, these are the non-IoT versions. The 24 volt version is $4,029. The nine volt version, again, pre-wired to the pre-programmed TXT controllers is $5,239 per unit. The conveyor belts in the 24 volt version are $226 each. In the nine volt version is $519 each. The punching machine with conveyor belt that's $299 in the 24 volt version. In the 9 volt version is $599.
The 3D or 3-axis robot in the 24-volt variation is $865 per unit. In the 9-volt version is $1,169 per unit. The indexed line with two machining stations in the 24-volt variation is $869, and the 9-volt version is $1,399. And finally, the Training Factory Industry 4.0 in the 24-volt version, again with the programming, $7,896 each. In the 9-volt version, $7,560 each. Other items which we've touched on, of course, in the 20 are the 120 volt power adapters for use with the nine volt models as required. In most cases, you need one, but in a couple cases, you need two or three. They're $12.99 each. And the travel and storage case, which can be used for all of the factory simulation and the training factory industry 4.0 models we looked at. So whether it's the nine volt or the 24 volt version on the factory models or the training factory models, you can use the storage case, which really should not be stored on its side like it's shown there. It should be stored flat but those are $1,000 each. So on that note, if you have any questions, this would be the time to ask away. So if you wanna use either of those uh, windows that I mentioned before, either you can use the chat window, which would be located on the Zoom toolbar, or you can use the question and answer window. Either way, you can feel free. If not, I'm going to pop ahead to this next screen. Of course, you can still ask a question anyway, but if you just want to know how to take the next step, and this includes contacting me, you could request a full color brochure and current pricing. We're actually getting the new uh, 2021 brochures any day now, so I'll be sending those out starting next week, hopefully. If you want to ask questions directly to me or any of the reps, if you'd like to request a quote, or if you'd like to speak with your dedicated educational representative, whatever state you're in, we have a representative who can speak to you. You can do any of these things by contacting us at Studica US 888-561-7521. Uh, for general questions, quote requests, what have you, you can email, email us at info, I-N-F-O at studica.com. Or if you have any questions for me specifically on anything that I brought up today, touched upon, something I didn't touch upon that you'd like to clarify, uh, or if you'd like to know more about any of the other Fisher Technic uh, solutions that we have of the non-simulation variety, you can feel free to email me as well. My email is lance.zurek, L-A-N-C-E dot Z-U-R-E-K at studica, S-T-U-D-I-C-A dot com. So on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for attending today's presentation. Have a great day. We do look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.